Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Spend some time alone with God. As it was His custom, Jesus went on the Mount of Olives to pray. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Spend some time alone with God. As it was his custom, Jesus went on the Mount of Olives to pray. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Spend some time alone with God. As it was his custom, Jesus went on the Mount of Olives to pray. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Spend some time alone with God. As it was his custom, Jesus went on the Mount of Olives to pray. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Spend some time alone with God. As it was his custom, Jesus went on the Mount of Olives to pray. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Spend some time alone with God. As it was his custom, Jesus went on the Mount of Olives to pray. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. All right, blessings. Thank you, Lord. of our Lord. Thank you all for joining us. This is Alone with God. We are in the presence of the Most High. And today we have a great, 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 great reason to give thanks to God because His mercies are new for us today. Amen. The Bible says that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. They are new mm. every morning. And great is His faithfulness. So we are here not because of anything that we have done, but because of the very grace of God. So just begin to thank the Lord with us. The psalmist has said that praise God from whom all blessings flow. The other day David said that I will bless the Lord at all times. In the good times, in the bad times, in the times of despair, in the 
the times when everything is going well, he said he will bless the Lord. But even in this very time, David had pretended that he was mad before the king of the Philistines. Yet he said, I will bless the Lord at all times because my circumstances does not change who God is. He is God. He changes not. He is a faithful God. And from the beginning of time, he existed. And so, Father, we bless you tonight. We just want to exalt your name on high. We just want to say that worthy are you, Lord, that the whole earth is filled with your goodness. We join the host of angels in heaven, and we say that kadosh, 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 holy are you, God. The whole earth is filled with your goodness. We just want to bless you tonight that we know that you have come to a secret place, the secret place of the Most High, where our weaknesses will be exchanged with your strength. We bless you, Father. I just want you to take a minute to say, Lord, I thank you. And Lord, I bless you for this episode, that you are going to use it to do something new in my life. I just want you to just whisper these words into the air. This is the season. This is the era of newness. God is doing something new in the life of his people. He said that I'll give you a new heart, a new spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome here. Have your place. Take your absolute right place. Let everything that we do tonight bring glory and honor unto your name. Let Jesus be lifted high. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, we thank you. The songwriter said, come just as you are to worship. And we have come to worship the name that is above every other name. Speak to us, O God. Let Jesus be revealed to us. The other day, Paul said that I labor so that Christ will be formed in you. We pray for a Christoformity tonight that Christ will be formed in the hearts and in the minds of everyone who will join us. And if it those who will watch in the future, let them have this experience. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, beloved of the Lord. Thank you for joining us. This is Alone with God. And we are so grateful to the Lord for another day, for another episode. We don't take each day for granted. What, what if we were not alive today? Who, were, who are we going to ask? Whom are we going to blame? But God is so merciful that he has bestowed us. He has shielded us in the palm of his arms. And we are here, so we thank God for uh, bringing us into his presence. Please, wherever you are, I want you to take a minute and kindly share this link with someone so that they can be blessed by the unchanging, ever-living word of God. If the world needs anything in this era, I believe it's the word of God. The word of God is alive, it is active, and it's going to change lives tonight. So please take a minute, a second, and share the link with a brother or sister. And tonight, we are going to continue uh, with the newness series. In fact, God has been blessing us um, each episode, and I believe that you have been blessed. Hallelujah. Those who have been watching, if you haven't watched, just keep up. On you, you, when you go to the YouTube channel, most of these messages are recorded there. And today, I have a very special guest uh, with me a man that I, I have come to really love and cherish. Uh, each time I go on uh, his page, I'm just blessed by the, 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 uh, the power of the word of God that he shares. And uh, he's in the person of Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul, welcome to Alone with God, sir. We welcome you. Uh, Pastor Paul is the pastor of um, Graceland Church. And uh, he's also a counselor at Grace um, Space. And uh, to, through these two uh, ministries, his desire, his goal is that he wants to seek that the word of God will bring people into a place where they will live their life to glorify God. Amen. Where he will teach the principles and biblical knowledge 
and um, also he serves as the chaplain for uh, his county's um, fire and police department. He's married to um, a wonderful man of God, uh, Esther, and they are blessed with five wonderful children. And um, he owes all this to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And tonight we are so blessed. Pastor, I want to welcome you again to Alone with God, my brother. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for You're having welcome. me. You're welcome. Yes, so I now leave uh, the rest to you to bless the people of God as God has laid on your hand. Well, I know, I know for us pastors, whether prayers were made 24 hours continuous or not before we speak, we, all, we always want to pray before we speak. So let's, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you and give you praise yes. for the opportunity to be counted among the living. At this time, we want to cause every problem, everything that uh, saddles our mind, because we want to even realize that to be alive, to have a problem is a privilege. And an even greater privilege to be able to come to you with everything that burdens us. We come boldly because we are sons and daughters. We ask that your word will be life and life yes. unto us. Have your way today and glorify yourself in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. So to, tonight I want to share something briefly uh, from a very popular uh, portion of scripture that we've come to accept as the parable of the lost son. Uh, in Luke chapter 15, verses 11, um, we, we, we are introduced to this parable by Jesus. And I want to first make a note that um, Bible scholars have always argued with why this, this, this uh, parable is called the parable of the lost son when the focal character of the story is, is the loving father. And perhaps it shows how, as human beings, we, 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 we cling to negativity more than we cling to positivity. Mm. Because when Jesus told this parable, he did not instruct them to call it yeah. the parable of the lost son. And the lesson behind it is not about the sons, it's about the father. Right. But, but anyway, today we are going to, <laughs> we're going yeah. to trust God to, to learn some key lessons from this that I believe will be applicable to our lives, um, you know, as, as we continue to pursue Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, so uh, because of time, I'm not going to read the whole uh, um, uh, parable, if you will, but I think we all know the gist of the story. The gist of the story is that a man had two sons, mm -hmm. one younger and one older. Yeah. The younger son one day woke up and came to his father and asked for his inheritance. He got his inheritance, left home, went to live somewhere, a uh, far country as the Bible describes it, and spent his money. And when he squandered his money, he, he hit hard times. He was going through some hard times. And then the Bible says that um, while he was doing, going through these hard times, he found a job where his duty was going to be feeding pigs. And so one day, it so happened that... Uh, at the point of needing to eat the same food that the pigs would eat, the Bible says he came to his senses and wondered or asked the question, how many servants are in my father's house who have more than enough to eat? And so because of that, he decided that he was going to turn around and go back home. Amen. Amen. Um, I think that the, the, the title I, I chose for this was... Um, Renewed, renewed yes. restored, and repositioned. repositioned. Renewed, restored, and repositioned. repositioned. Amen. Amen. I believe that it has always been the Father's will for his children to be 
renewed, mm -hmm. to be restored, restored, and to be repositioned. Yes. It has always been the Father's will. And today we're going to learn some lessons from this. So the, after this, uh, I'm trusting God that there will be a renewal in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm trusting God that there will be a revival. There will be a repositioning uh, in, in all of our lives. Um, one of the interesting things that we will learn about this parable is that the little son is like many of us. And there are many of us who we say what we feel. You know, there are, there are some people, they don't hide anything. Yep. You know, they, they are, they are, their emotional bank is empty because they don't wait on anything. And sometimes those people get a very, very bad representation. Why? Because while everybody is quiet, they speak their mind. Mm. And this little, this little brother in the beginning is cast into a, a scenario where he does what many of us will consider to be rude, to be harsh. You know, I don't know about you, but there are sometimes I admire the boldness of people who can speak their mind regardless of what is going on. And sometimes you can look at those people and cast dispersions on them and think that they are either too loud or... But the honesty of the fact is that many of us would wish we could do that. But for one reason or the other, we can't. So essentially, this, this, this gentleman's wish... Is, is calling for something that happens only in the death of a parent. So imagine you asking your parents, when you die, what will you leave me? Or whatever you leave me when you die, can I have it now? No. It was, it, I mean, it was a taboo. Even today, it will be a taboo to do that, right? Yeah. But he was straightforward. He was bold. He, he, he lived, you know, the, 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 I guess the, the popular saying now is YOLO. You only live once. Right. Mm. People like that, they don't put money in savings and wait for a rainy day. They make it rain every day instead of waiting for a, a rainy day. Right. It's like this guy. There are some people, for example, for those of us who go to church in a church setting, some people dance like tomorrow. There will be no music. music. That's who they are. They, what you <laughs> see is what you get. Good. Right. Yeah. He, he was that type of person. And and and. And, and interestingly, the father in this parable grants him the request. Mm. He grants him the request. The father did not say that it is rude. He didn't say that it is, it is, um, it is pompous. But he gave him his request. Okay. And he goes away. And the Bible tells us that he squanders the money. Mm. And some lessons that we can draw in on this. Sometimes, sometimes when we are in a place... We can take things for granted until those conditions don't exist anymore. Mm. Whether it be a relationship, whether it be um, uh, enjoying your singlehood, mm. right? I know people today who tell me, uh, Pastor Paul, I wish I could just go hang out with the boys. I'm like, well, you can't have boys because now you're married. married. When you were <laughs> single, you should have enjoyed the boys as much as you can. Yeah. But now when you have kids crying, how do you say I'm going to hang out with the boys? You can't do that. Okay. So it teaches us must enjoy every season you find yourself in to the fullest Amen. to the fullest if you are if you are just if you're a brother now enjoy being a brother because when you become a husband you will not have time to be a brother to many people okay. if you're a sister right now listen enjoy the sisterhood because there will come a time you just want to go hang out with the girls but mm. you have a higher calling now what do you do my god what do you do right so being a, being a, being in a single season is not wrong. It's it's not out of you know. Sometimes we blow it out of proportion and make it yeah. seem like if you think oh, there's something wrong with you. No, it is a season that you must enjoy. You must maximize it. You must learn every single lesson that there is to be learned. Imagine a married person who wants to always go and hang out in places where they can't go with their spouse. Is because you have a deficit of hanging out. Yeah. Hang out now so that when you marry, you can hang in I and like not that. hang out. Amen. Amen. <laughs> right? So this, this this young this young man is asking for something and the, he gets it only to go and find out that it is not exactly what it seems. Mm. How many of us have prayed for something, desired something, fasted for something? Some of us, even Christians, we backbite for something. Yeah. 
we lobby and get the thing. When we get it, we realize that is that is that is this all? Oh, That's yes. it. Yeah. Is is this it? When Adam and Eve were, were were tempted by the devil, you know what the devil told them? The devil told them that if you eat of this tree, you will become like God. Originally, God's intention is that I'm creating them in my image. In other words, they were already godlike. So when you don't know your identity, you you inherit certain tastes that your digestive system was not meant to digest. My God. It is like it is like my brother Walter, you coming to me and telling me that Pastor Paul, I have a certain cream. When I give it to you, you will be bored. Hello, I'm already <laughs> bored. So even if you sell it to me at fifty percent off, I have still bought a useless product. Yeah. And they bought that product only to find out that they were naked. Mm. So when you don't know your identity, you will inherit certain tastes that right. spiritually, emotionally, you were not mm -hmm. meant to digest. Right. So who knows? This gentleman, rather than enjoy the conditions at home, thought that he could go and multiply the success he enjoyed at home outside. Mm -hmm. Only to go and find out that even with the same ingredients, you will not get the same results. Mm -hmm. right. You know, sometimes whether it be in a relationship, whether it be a place where you live, if you don't have the understanding to value what you have, yeah. you, will, you, you, will, you will pay extra mm. to get half of what you had that mm. you did not appreciate. My God. There's a saying I, I like very much. It says that whatever you appreciate, appreciates. Mm. The first appreciate is, is being grateful for it. The yeah. second appreciate is it increases in value. So this gentleman did not appreciate his home. He did not appreciate the conditions. And so he asked to go out. And even though he was blessed with whatever he needed, when he went, it did not work. Mm. How many of us are, are bent out of shape and are refusing to turn around and go back simply because of what people will say? say. <laughs> the number of Christians who are living for other Christians is sad. Mm. It's incredibly sad because many of us like this, like this initial prodigal son, if we think of going back, we will rather stay where we are yeah. and, and be bent out of shape. But notice that the, the problem here is identity. Yeah. The problem here is identity. He was a son who wanted to have his own power and therefore became a servant. Ooh. There are many of us, we are not living like sons and daughters. There are many of us, they are living to please another person. Oh, man. And when we realize that that other person or that other group of people we're trying to please don't care about you, we've already sacrificed so much. Then so, and so how do we go back? Mm. There are many people who have left the church, who have left their family and all these things. And I tell people all the time, if the prodigal son had decided to go back because of his brother, he would not have gone back. Remember, he went back because of the father. father. Oh, man. Can I speak to somebody who, who, who yeah. is thinking about leaving church because mm. church is full of, of, of offenders? Listen, we, are, we all have problems in church. But if yeah. you go to church because of a brother or a sister, you have missed it. You must go back home because, because of, the, of father. the father. My God. Mm. When, the, when the prodigal son went back home, it looked like, it looked like everything was great until the big brother okay. showed up and said, Hey! Why are we celebrating over somebody who left? There are many people in church whose heart should be to welcome other people back. But when other people are coming back, it's mm. like, oh, but this one, I remember their record. I know what they did. Mm. I saw what they did. But you know something? Because the prodigal son, the younger son came back home, we also realize what is wrong with the big brother. The big brother yeah. You know, there are, there are some of us, there are some of us, our issues are not public. They are, they are internal. Internal, yes, sir. And when the people who have internal issues look down on the people who have public issues, it is the height of hypocrisy. Mm. Because the heart of the father was that this gentleman will come back home. Yeah. The heart of the big brother was that this little brother will stay away, stay away. and I will be the mm. only one. So if you compare the two, they both had issues. Yeah. That is why in the house of God, None of us can exalt ourselves beyond what we need to exalt ourselves to be. Hey. It is just by the grace of God. The grace. Yes. It is 
And listen, a brother or sister may fall. They need encouragement. You don't stand upon your, your self-righteousness and, and, and bash them with a, with, 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 a, with a righteous cane. No, 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 no. Because in, in another person's mistakes, your fault is revealed. If the big brother was so inclined to the father like it looked in the beginning, mm. how are we in church and we are celebrating something that is not the heart of the father? Oof. The posture of the father paints a picture of a man who never rested until his son came back home. Okay. Yeah. And yet the big brother thought that he was, he, he thought that home was good. He thought that things were good. Mm. And many of us go to church and we think things are good because we have nice furnishings and we have speakers and microphones and all of these things. But imagine, imagine doing church, living your Christian life and none of the things you are celebrating or jubilating over is, is what pleases the Father. You are, as, you are as lost. You are as lost as a little brother. The only difference is that you are playing church and he is on the, he's far away in the world. One of the reasons Jesus put against hypocrisy is this. One of the biggest reasons why Jesus preached against hypocrisy is this. Mm. Is because a person who is a hypocrite is far away from making that U-turn. Yeah, very. Sometimes it is better to be known as a full-blown sinner because then you have nowhere to turn. But a hypocrite thinks they are okay when they are actually dying. Uh, so with a hypocrite, you offer them first aid and they will say, oh no, give it to the other person. Give it to the other person. Mm. There's a story I like to tell. And in this story, there's a, there's a gentleman who always was on time in church. And every time the pastor preaches, he will do what we call sermon distribution. Mm. He will sit down and say, ah, this message is for this one. This message is for this one. <laughs> and at the end of service, you meet the pastor and you tell the pastor, pastor, today's service was good. I just wish that that family that just moved in, oh. they were here to hear it. I just wish that that brother who left the church three weeks ago, I wish they were here to hear it. And so, and, and so one day, it, it snowed and nobody else came to church. So it was just the pastor and this gentleman. And the pastor said to himself, today, my brother is going to get all of the message. The pastor preached his heart out. And at the end of the day, when the pastor stood at the door to greet everybody who came, this man went to the pastor and said, Pastor, great message i just wish the whole church had been here to hear the message there are many of us we are sermon distributors and we never take anything for ourselves mm. in the in jesus's day this group of people were called the pharisees they knew the law yeah. they applied the law to other people but their heart was far away from what the word was intended to do mm. the, the 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 prodigal son the the junior brother exposed the older brother for his hypocrisy, mm. for his for his cancerous behavior. My God. You know, some diseases don't have outward symptoms. Yeah. They kill you silently. Mm -hmm. So we would never have known the issue of this brother if the little brother had not come home. How many of us are in church? We are happy with the role we play, but mm. we are comfortable gossiping about the other one who has fallen or the other one who has not come back. What is the heart of the father in this case? The heart of the father is that my son, who is dead, will come yeah, back home. Amen. Uh, and I want you to see that he didn't have to do anything for God to well, for the father to welcome him back. Mm -hmm. There are many of us brothers, we've put conditions for people's repentance that even the father does not uphold. Yeah. When he came in, it was the father who ran. To go and welcome him. It's the father who was looking forward to the day that he'll come back home. Yeah. And yet there are brothers and sisters who mm. will not welcome you home. Mm. Because they are happy to the spotlight for themselves. Yeah. Because they are happy, they are happy being the one who the focus is on. Mm. Listen to what the father said. This my son was dead yeah. and now he's alive. So how can somebody be dead to God? And we are we are we are we don't have any emotions about people who are dying around us. We, because we are, we are interested in playing church than being the church. Ah, yeah. It's one thing to go to church. It's another thing to be the church. Be the church. Mm. You see, church is not like a You can go to a 
and enjoy the food and not know the history of Beggar King. You, you don't have to know the owner of Beggar King to enjoy the food. But in church, it is all about the owner of the church. And that's Jesus Christ. Yes. You cannot be church and not care about what he cares about. You cannot enjoy church and not know what church is about. Church is not about a nice gathering where we like everybody, where we say high five and we have cliche. No. No, 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 no. Church is about gathering to do what the will of the Father is. And that's what the, the, the older brother could not understand. The older brother could not understand. He was playing church instead of being the church. So when, when the younger brother finally goes home, look at how the father restores him. The father restores him because when we are out of God's will, he still sees us as children. Yeah. So when he came back, he didn't he didn't give him he, he didn't give him conditions to fail. Mm. Because guess what? God loves us because of our identity and not because of our activity or because of our productivity. Sometimes we think that God is a boss. God is not a boss, he's first a father. Yes. And as a father, you don't love your children because of how well they do in school. No. Rather, you love them so that they will do well in school. So when the, when the boy remembered that I am living as a servant, but I was born as a son, he said, how many servants in my father's house have more than enough? How many? How many? How many? There are many of us today, we think that we have to do so much for, to earn God's love. Listen, mm. if you think you can earn God's love, then you haven't seen or met God's love. Oh. Mm. God's love cannot be bought. Yeah. God's love cannot be manipulated. God's love cannot... You, they, they, what can you do to deserve God's love? Mm. So as the son hit rock bottom, he decides to return his father. Listen, I don't know where you've hit rock bottom. Is it in your marriage? Is it in your finances? Is it in your life? Sometimes in life we hit rock bottom. But when we hit rock bottom, it is not our activity that will get us out. It is not our productivity that will get us out. It is our identity. Let me share something with you. If you buy a cell phone today, before you connect the cell phone to any career, there are three numbers you can call. 411, uh, 911, and the number to the very company who owns that that so in this is the same thing with you and i one of the most important prayers you will ever pray is a prayer that says god i'm at i'm at the rock bottom yeah. god always answers that prayer you don't need activation to call 911 oh so long as the, the phone is charged you can call 911 what this brother did was a, a 911 call he did to 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 to, to to, to call any other number, it would be telling himself that I have to dress well. I, I, I have to smell good. Because remember, remember, he was he was feeding pigs, which was a taboo yeah. in the Jewish culture. He didn't have to take a shower to go back to his father's house because he wasn't going in because of productivity or because of activity. He was going there because of identity. Many of us have foresold our identity and we are we are living in a way that doesn't uphold God. When you remember your identity in Christ, there are so many things you will not subscribe to. So many things. So many things. The, the, just, just the belief that God loves me. Listen, when Jesus Christ was walking on earth, when he healed the sick, we didn't hear any response from heaven. Mm -hmm. When he raised the dead, heaven didn't announce anything. Yeah. But when Jesus Christ mm. bowed down at the foot of John the Baptist, for John the Baptist to baptize him, a man who was going to deny him a, a, a while after, yeah. God turned on the PA system in heaven and announced, uh, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Well, what had Jesus done? 
He hadn't done anything. He hadn't called disciples. He hadn't started a ministry. There was no flyer about Jesus. He, he, he didn't have a website. He didn't have an Instagram page. He hadn't done a live before. He was just humble. And in that humility, God says, that's my son, identity right there. Mm. There was no great activity. There are many of us today, we think that unless we do something great, God loves yeah. What can you do great to a great mm. God? Uh, he, is the, he brings the greatness to your identity. You don't have to do anything. So when he returned, he was immediately restored. He was immediately renewed. And he was repositioned from a servant to a son. He didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to go and clean himself. He didn't have to go and refile papers. He didn't have to go and, uh, uh, um, um, and file, file to be a citizen. No, 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 no. You were born a son. You were born a daughter. You were born a son. Oh, you were born a son. You were born a daughter. So, so no matter how life has swayed you away, no matter how life has changed, even, even, even the things that you surround yourself with, all you need to do is to remember who you are and whose you are. We are not what we do. No, 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 we are not what we do. We are who God has called us to be. Listen, if, 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 I, if I call you a name and you don't respond, who owns that name? If I give you a gift and you don't accept it, who owns that gift? I own that gift. Many of us have inherited identities that we were not meant to live by. Mm. Let, me, let me give you a, an example. When David went to uh, um, um, Saul to ask permission to fight Goliath, mm. Saul himself and his whole army, they were shaking. They were, shaking yeah. they were afraid of Goliath. David has the boldness to approach and say that I want to fight this gentleman. Mm -hmm. And then Saul says that in that case, wear the uniform of the king. And in our day and time, that, that uniform or that armor would be the greatest money can buy. Mm -hmm. Out of respect, David walks in the uniform and realizes that, nah, this is not who I am. So yeah. I can't give it back. There are many of us, we are walking in Saul's uniform because we think that is how we can beat Goliath. Mm -hmm. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's not by your activity. It's not by your productivity. It's by identity. Listen to what listen to what David said. The only reason David felt like he was qualified to fight Goliath was that Goliath is an uncircumcised Philistine and I am a child of God. Can you imagine? So even the mindset with which he fought the battle is different. Do you know who you are, fellow believer? Do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? Oh my God. Do you know whose you are? There are many of us. Our faith is based on what we can achieve. Mm. When we have a God mm. who upholds your identity, who upholds my identity. So when this son came back, immediately his clothes were changed. The Bible tells us that they put a ring on him and they threw a party. Or his father threw a party for the whole world to understand. Mm. Because this son who was dead is now alive. Do you know how many of us are on life support but are literally mm. dead? Because when we are outside God's will, for all intents and purposes, we are dead. This boy was dead, basically. But when he came back home, he had life again. Yes. There are so many of us we are, we are working and living on life support. Our marriages are on life support. Our, 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 our spiritual lives are on life support. Everything. My God. And when you're on life support and you, you depend on a brother, you will realize that a brother will, 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 will let you down. Sometimes it's not because they are bad, right? But listen, the Bible says vain is the arm of flesh. And anyone who trusts in the arm of flesh will realize that no, no, no. Because the person who you are depending on to solve your problems is also engulfed by their own problems. Yeah. So while the younger brother had an outward problem, the older brother had an inward problem. That's the kind of inward problem that we don't know until something happens. Yeah. Everybody thinks you are good. 
everybody thinks you are safe until something happens and then yeah. and then it shocks everybody like oh my god you were even worse than i was <laughs> and they were all where in the father's house in the father's yeah. house we all have issues yeah. in the father's house we all have issues it is it is when we are yielded to who the father is that our identity is restored that we are renewed and then we are repositioned if you want to stop living as a servant and live as a son, if you want to start living as a daughter, there's a quick U-turn you have to make. The Bible says he, it, he came to his senses. I call it in the modern days, you have an aha moment. You know, sometimes you'll be sitting down and then you know something, but it doesn't dawn on you. And when it dawns on you, it's like a mind shift. It's like, why am I settling for this? Why am I settling for something that is beneath the staff of my father? Mm. And when that happens, from the day that mindset shift happened, he was he was he was alive again. Mm. There are many of us we have refused to make that U turn because we know what the brother would think when we go. Listen, don't serve God because of a brother or a sister. Serve God because of the father. Don't refuse to go back to where you belong because of a brother or a sister. Go Amen. back because of the father. Amen. Because whatever the father says will override whatever the brother does. Yeah. Mm. It is the father's embrace that we want. It is yes. not the brother's endorsement that we seek. Mm. And so when he went back home, yeah. all it took was the father. Whose approval are you looking for in this world? Yeah. Whose approval are you seeking so diligently in this world? Listen, if you give, if you put man where only God should occupy, you will expect from man what only God can give. Oh. Mm. If you if you put man where only God should occupy, you will look up to man for what only God can guarantee. Jesus. The source of your wealth, the, 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 the pinnacle of everything that is about you, if you subject it to man, I'm going to tell you that you will lose it. There are many of us, we've made our marriages, our ministries, our money, our, 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 our automobiles, savings, check, whatever. You've made that your God. That will not last, brother, my sister. That will not last. Until, until God is a reason why. Until God is a reason. You will end up trying to please people who you realize that were not even thinking about you while you were trying to please. Go back to the Father. Not because of what other people will say. Yes. But because in the Father's house, in the Father's arms, your identity is secure. In the Father's arms, your activity is important, but it's not the best thing. In the Father's arms, you don't have to impress to be. You are a human being. You are not a human doing. Hey, my God. In the Father's house, your needs are met. In the Father's house, you don't need to impress. He's already impressed with you. After all, he made you. He made you. Even, even companies that make products are proud of their products. How much more the father oh, who created you? My God. Oh my God. Many of us, many of us in our families, we're expected to do X, Y, Z to be accepted. In the father's house, you're expected to just be. Hey. The father didn't inquire where you went. How did you spend them? How much of it is left? Are you going to pay interest? Did you have... Hey, how good is your credit? No. The father says, come home. Because in, in the home, yeah. your credit is secure. Amen. You are approved. You are loved. Before you do anything, you are loved. Jesus had not done anything. And God said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Mm. At the foot of another man who was going to deny Jesus. Oh, wow. And here we are, bending over backwards, trying to please man. No, 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 child of God. So in this story, 
we see the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is that everyone will find who? Everyone of them will find expression in his house. Amen. If you are a Christian living like a servant, tonight I want to encourage you to come back home and live like a son and a daughter. Somebody said, Pastor Paul, what does it mean to be a son and a daughter? Oh, I'm glad you asked. To live like a son and a daughter simply means you know who you are living to please. Yeah. It knows. It, it means you know who you are getting your identity from. You don't get your identity from what you do. You don't get your identity from where you live. Yeah. You don't even get your identity from how you were born. You get your identity from who you are. Yeah. And if we are children of God, mm. you imagine a child of God living beneath <coughs> simply because we don't know who we are. <coughs> Maybe you are watching me and you are like the older son. Your issues are not public, but they are deep and they are deeply rooted. Maybe you are like the, you are like the younger son your issues are the kind where everybody can tell. You know, there are some sicknesses when you have them, the symptoms are public. Everybody yeah. knows that this boy, you are sick, right? But mm. equally, they both lead to the same place. Yeah. And the solution is God. The solution is the Father. The solution is the Father. In these two people, we realize their scenario. Listen. God's love is 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 indescribable mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's so indescribable that even other people who are benefiting from the love think that other people are not qualified for it mm -hmm. and yet when you remove it from their life they are also as dead as the brother that they were trying to hey. uh, mm -hmm. as the believer today i want to encourage you let your goal yeah. be doing what will please the Father yeah. and not what will keep you happy. Sometimes I ask the question, what if, God's, God's, what if God is trying to keep us holy and not just keep us happy? Mm. Will we like that? It is, it is God's will that His children dwell and live together in peace and in harmony. But when another person falls, our reaction reveals the condition of our heart. Yeah. Think about it. A person falls down and injures himself, and I'm laughing. We are both injured. Yeah. One is physical, the other is emotional. Because if you can laugh at something that should make you worry, mm. Mm. there's an abnormality there. My God. Because nobody whose relationship with the Father is intact will find any reason to rejoice when another person with the Father is not intact. So tonight, I want to invite those of you who are watching. Are you, are you far away from the Father's house? And if so, have you considered making a U-turn? Don't worry about what other church people will say. As for church people, we talk. But don't come to church or don't come back to the father because of his other children. Come back to the father because of his genuine heart. Amen. Oh. And if you are like, if you are like the older brother, as for you, you haven't left. It's just that your heart has not been home in a long time. It's like you are there, you are going through the motions, but you don't even know what the father's heart is. Mm. Both of us need to make a U-turn. Yeah. One who need a physical U-turn. And the other would be an emotional and a spiritual U-turn. Because being in the being in the same house as the Father does not mean that your heart is alive. Mm. This parable emphasizes the importance of forgiveness. Yeah. The importance of being real with yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Listen, lying to yourself is like going for an MRI and putting on perfume. The MRI will not be affected by the perfume. Or, or going for an x-ray and, and, and saying that, oh, you, you want to apply lotion to your skin so that you, you, you smell good. 
X-ray has nothing to do with your with, with how you smell. And when when we when we are not honest with our condition before God, that's how we look. Listen, God loves you because He's your Father. He doesn't love you because you're a good person or a bad person. And when you begin to accept that He loves you for that reason, you have no other choice but to be good. I believe that we live in a day and time where God is calling us to be honest with where we are. Yeah. It is in our weakness that his strength is made perfect. It's not in our pretending to be strong. Yeah. It is in our admitting of our weakness. I pray that God will bring us to the points where we desire that we will be renewed will be restored to the place of intimacy with God and will be repositioned to live as sons and daughters because when I'm a son and I'm a daughter even if I tell you my name I've told you who my father is yeah. I don't have to do exploits for you to know who my father is if I tell you my name you're going to know who gave birth to me and that's where God is calling us as, as, the, as the body of Christ to get back to when you when you introduce yourself which part of you is god are you living as part of god i want you to if you're watching us before i hand over to my my gracious hosts i want you to just look within yourself look within yourself is there, is there any unspoken hurt or pain? Is there, is there, anything, is there anything that you, you, are not, you are not able to come out of in, 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 in a sense where you are living a life pretending that you have to do something to earn God's love? Listen, we live in a world that is so competitive that even in church there's competition everywhere you look. I remember, uh, you know, a couple came to me and, and they, they wanted to have a wedding and we we're talking about a wedding and they said that, you know, the last wedding they had in church, it was so wow. powerful that they have to re revise their budget. Oh I said, God. are you marrying for fans? Like, what are you marrying for? Competition? No. But so many, and this is true. This is how people yeah. are living. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. When the servant remembered that he was a son somewhere, he turned, he, when he came to his senses, may we come to our senses. May we come to our senses that we have a father who is looking forward for the day when we we'll come to our senses and realize that his love for us has never changed. While you are contemplating on this, I want to leave you with this, that the father loves you, not because of your productivity, not because of your activity, but because of your identity. What is, are you a child of God? Amen. 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 Wow. 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 Pastor, please, I'm going to have you, you know, say a word of prayer for us. But this song is just been ringing in my heart as you were preaching. He says, in mm. my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father's house, wow. there's a place for you. You are a child of God. Yes, you are. Uh, you are not forsaken. He is for you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. It's a place for you. Whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Pastor, can you just bless 
can you just pray for someone who is on the line who feels that they have gone so far that they cannot come back i pray that this message touches their heart there are so many people yes. that are hurt there are so many people who have been traumatized there are so many people mm. that the church that they thought would hold them when they were about to fall did not get that and so they are mm. running away instead of them running back to the father the very place where they will have compassion from the father they are running away so please i want you to just as you are led pray for everyone and anyone mm. who is on this line and whenever they hear this message that the lord is calling them back to the place of sonship that they will come Amen. for a place where he calls them that he is their father Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Amen. before i pray let me just share this little story that i tell as a power there's a there's there's a, a man who went to church with his family and he was running late and so he, he forgot to put off his phone or put his phone on uh silent or vibrate yeah. and so during the church he was he, he he was getting a call and it was so loud and it was one of those ringers that everybody knows that it, this is your this is your phone yeah it was very embarrassing for him but in the middle of it there was nothing he could do because his coat was hanging in the back the pastor even turned the sermon and preached preached about him, you know, bashed him a lot, like mm. it was very bad. And after church, some of the church members too, you know, you know how church people we do. Yeah. His family on the way home to look at him and said so many, he felt really bad. Right. So when he dropped the family at home, he told them, I'll be right back. Mm. So while he was driving, he stopped at a bar. Now, mind you, he doesn't drink. He's not a drinker. So he stopped at the bar and just entered. Mm. When he entered, he sat at the bar and he asked for a drink. The guy said, what would you, would you like to drink? He said, just give me club soda. Just nothing. I'm not a drinker. So, so when he took the drink, he was turning to find a better place to sit. And then he bumped into a waiter who was holding a lot of food and a lot of drinks. And then everything poured. Mm. So this man was thinking to himself, oh God, what a terrible day i'm having yeah but before he could open his mouth and say anything the bar manager came and said sir please step aside we'll take care of it we'll clean it mm. but here's a new shirt for you here's a new drink for you why don't you Whoa. sit here where it's clean Whoa. don't worry about it. he was shocked to the point where when he was leaving after he had done everything he tried to pay they said no the drink is free just don't worry about it and the manager looked at him and says, listen, we all have bad. So he left and he went home. Apparently, this man has not stepped back in that church again. But even though he's not a drinker, he goes to the bar very frequently. Sometimes church people are like this big brother. Mm. We will castigate you and make it seem like you don't deserve God's love. You are everything about God's love is saying that my brother, oh, sorry, my son or my daughter, all you need to do is to return from the ways that you took and come back to your first love. Come back home. Come back home. Come back home. My encouragement and my prayer for you is that you will not look at church members and how church members behave, but rather you will be fixated on the love of Christ when you think of church. When you think yeah. of church, don't think about the organizers. When you think of church, don't think about the members. Think about the Father. He's the one building His church. Yeah. He's the one building His church. If if this older brother had fo if if the younger brother had focused on the older brother, there would have been no reason to go back home. Yeah. And he said, "How many people in my father's house?" Yeah. When you think of church. When you think of any of these things, think of the Father. He's the one who can fix that trauma. He's the one who can restore you. He's the one who can renew you. He's the one who can reposition you. When church ceases to be about the members and, and becomes about the Father, you know that your heart is in the right place. We don't go to church to please your pastor. We don't go to church to please the other members. We go to church to serve the God. Purchase your 
your, your, your life, who pet your I mean, he, he's, he's the one who owns us. So I want to pray with you. If you are if you are at a point where you are one of those people who says that, you know, too many people have hurt me, and therefore, listen, when a person gets knocked out and they get a serious injury, it takes another car to take them to the hospital. Yeah. So the fact that God's children are hurting you or you've been hurt by God's children, that's not me. Your focus should always be on God. Yeah. Always. So I want to pray with you, Father, if there are people listening yes, who are hurt, who are traumatized, who are angry, who are upset, who are grieving. Because they've gone through something that is hurtful, that is painful. Lord, we know that there is no pain that your warm embrace cannot take away. There is, there is no grief that a hug from God cannot evaporate. Yes, Lord. There is nothing that we can feel that is discomforting, Lord, that your presence cannot eliminate, O oh Lord. Uh. So, regardless of what we go through, Lord, Help us remember Help us. it is in your arms that we find arms. our sonship yes, and daughtership. It is in your presence that we have our fullness of joy. It is in your fellowship, oh God, that we are strengthened and that the past is no longer relevant in how right. we live. Our life. So for those who are hurting, Lord, may they find comfort in your presence. May they find comfort in your word. May they find direction in your word. Yes, Lord. May we not listen to the devil to go farther than we are, but may we yes. have the boldness and courage to make a U-turn like, like the prodigal son did. Yes, Lord. And if we are like the older son, Lord, may we come out of hypocrisy out of and realize that we need you as much as those who have left the fold. Yes, may we not be self-righteous, uh, but may we seek your righteousness. Yes, Lord. May we not be haughty in our eyes, but may we be humble in your eyes, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless everyone who is listening, Lord, and who will listen. Yes, Lord. Touch their heart and meet them at the point of, yes, of where they find themselves, Lord. We see the heart of a father who longs for his children. Yes, Lord. Yeah, you pursue us even when we don't know what to pursue. You love us even when we don't understand what love is. Yes, Lord. You love us even when we are in error. Mm. Help us to remember this. Mm. I pray for clarity of mind for anyone yes, who Lord. is juggling all these decisions that need yes, to Lord. be made. I pray that you'll be the one that we search and thirst to please, O oh God. May we not be men pleasers. Uh, yeah, May we be God's In Jesus' name, praise Lord. I thank you for your love. Yes, Lord. I honor you, Lord. Yeah. I honor you, Lord. Yeah. In Jesus' name, yes. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The psalmist was right when he says, you satisfy us with your love, Father. We thank you that you have really poured through your son to your people. May Jesus be elevated. And Pastor Paul, we thank God for your life. We pray that he continue to pour on you. This is the type of message that we need in this era. I pray that the grace of God will continually fill your heart. The peace of God Amen. will surround you and your family as you keep on sharing such biblical truths and principles mm -hmm. to bring many to the kingdom of God in such a time as this. God bless you so much. And I'm very, very grateful. And um, I thank you for taking time to join us. I pray and very, uh, that we'll see you again. And uh, Amen. Another in another uh, series. God bless you so much. Amen. 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 Please, can we all share the grace?
that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And surely his goodness and his mercies shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us for another episode of Alone with God. Um, please stay tuned. This is our second anniversary. God has been good to us and we have more coming your way. We pray that you share this video. Uh, pray with us. Yes, especially stand with us in prayer. Partnership with us so that the kingdom business will go far. God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As it was his custom, Jesus went on the Mount of Olives to pray. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Spend some time alone with God.